The sermon for Easter is from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. The sermon is entitled, The Good Life. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Those very words show us, as we proclaim the words of victory, this victorious life, as everything has come into place, that indeed, now and forevermore, friends, life is good. Life is good. It really is that good that you have, by the redeeming grace of our Lord, the good life. Like that final piece in a thousand piece puzzle that you tried so hard to finish step by step, day by day, night by night, and when you finally place that last puzzle piece in its spot, you have fulfillment, accomplishment with this complete picture. And so it is with this day as we have come together, as we celebrate completion, that life is good. Because your life is good, because the Lord has delivered you this life, calling you by name, redeeming you by His blood, as you live this day in the risen Christ. I look back on this year, I know, I think it was me, Jeff, and Chris, online only last year. It's already been a year. And now we are together outside, and we could look back on this year, and many would say this has been, an, a, diff, has been a very difficult and most challenging time for the world, and even for you individually, and I, I totally get it. There are many occasions with these words, life is good, that these words were far away from our thoughts and minds. The disciples, the followers of Christ, they had just seen the treachery of the cross on the goodest Friday, the horror of this cross was still fresh on their minds, dying the kind of death that according to man was no good death at all. Rather, it was the excruciating death of the cross, Jesus being pierced, the blood and the water flowing from his side, still fresh in their hearts and minds of their king. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome were heading to the tomb and there as they were walking asked, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? You know, this moment was, this, was their final piece of the puzzle. The conclusion of what they saw in his death. And though they anticipated a certain piece, the body of the slain Christ, they discovered a different piece of the puzzle that would radically and most victoriously reverse everything that they were searching for on that Easter morn. The piece of the puzzle that our Lord brought to the table, all His life, His ministry, His, tell, his teachings, His predictions of His death and resurrection, it all came together as they heard those very words from the angel, do not be alarmed. You see Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. It's that final piece that is placed in this picture of salvation. He is risen and he is not here. Right there, right there in that very, very moment, we have the good life. Our Lord Christ died for His bride, the church, and there in His resurrection presents you holy and blameless in front of 
God, covered by his blood, you have the good life, forgiven of your sins. You have the good life, life eternal. That means your life is forever. Even from this point on, you have the good life under the good shepherd. And here we see the tension, don't we? On Easter morn, the good life, even as we say the words, Christ is risen, He is risen indeed, hallelujah. Even then we move on with our weak, the itching ears, the covetous hearts, the subtle and sneaky idolatry of self. Tempted to believe that we are still missing something. That though Jesus has given to us that final piece of the puzzle before his final return, the devil, the flesh, the world will tell you, you are still missing something. You are still missing that one piece. What is that missing piece in your life? What is that spot in that very puzzle that you want to fill apart from Christ? Your carnal comforts, your covetous desires, our flesh clamors for more. We want more pieces to this puzzle. We want more when it comes to our view of the good life. Yes, we are here on Easter morn. Momentary, we tell ourselves this is, that there is more to life than this. What is that peace that you are waiting for? That you tell yourself, only if I had that piece of the puzzle, my life would be good. What is that peace? As I said earlier, from last Easter to now, it has been a trying time, but an ever important time. That as we face the great disrupt, as our patterns of living have been uprooted, mortality has been near each and every one of us. You may be saying to yourself, Pastor, how can you say this is the good life? Look what is happening in our world. If the pandemic was not enough, look at the strife, the discord, the murderous ways of man, the pure evil that is in our midst, the warring of man against each other. And you tell us we still have the good life. How could this be? I think for the disciples as well, I can't imagine how terrifying the cross was to be a witness as they ran and scattered to their own homes. But just as Jesus told Peter and the rest that post-resurrection they would face persecution, even death for the sake of the gospel. But what never changed was that life was good, and it will always be good because the resurrected Lord had already brought them victory yesterday, today, and tomorrow. See, the good life, friends, is way beyond what we want it to be. The good life is beyond our own thoughts and ways and opinions of what this good life is because Jesus this day sets the tone that this day is a dawning of a new day, a new era, a day of restoration, a day of victory, not just for today, but forever, tomorrow and the rest. Friends, I know with all the things that are happening in this world, you might ask yourself, why is this or that happening? But the question we should be asking is this, what is the Lord's will? What is the Lord's will? 
And this day he answers that very question. His will is done in those very words. He is risen. He is not here. Jesus raising from the dead changes the outlook on everything. It is this very peace that he put the nail in the coffin for death itself. It was in that very moment as they heard the angel saying, He is risen, that the graves of all of humanity were opened. The victory over the devil and the gates of hell swung right open. We too shout out all together, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Because here, everything flows from the risen Lord. It's not simply the death of Christ that we follow, but the fulfillment in the empty tomb. For our faith is not in a dead Jesus, but rather a risen one, as St. Paul writes. If Christ did not raise from the dead, our faith is futile and we would still be in our sins. Still being in our sins is not the puzzle piece that Jesus gives to us. Rather, conversely, since Christ was raised from the dead, your faith is not futile, your faith is not foolish, but your faith in Christ, in the risen Lord, is true. And your truth is that your sins are forgiven. Your truth is is that you are raised to eternal life, and death has lost its sting. And thus you stand, because Christ has been raised from the dead. Through all things, through all the joys, through all the challenges, through all the spiritual struggles you may be facing right now as these waves are tossing to and fro, as the devil is tempting you as he loves to be that wave maker. One thing stays the same. is that final puzzle piece of our Lord that never changes, that is here to stay, and that is His resurrection for you. And there flows to you, by His grace, <laughs> the good life. You have the good life. Life is good. This is the puzzle piece that our Lord has given to you. No more searching. No more earning, no more meriting, no more about deserving, but our Lord brings this everlasting peace in both ways. A joyous moment as we celebrate the fulfillment of the masterpiece of the, the Creator, the Redeemer, the Sanctifier, our Lord Jesus Christ. And because we have no more missing pieces, there are no more question marks about salvation, no more crisis of conscience, no more wonder whether we are forgiven or not, no longer thinking or, or questioning whether our names are written in the book of life. Because you have the answer, and that is our Lord risen from the dead. And there you are living now and forevermore the good life. Seeing this picture of God's will be done in this puzzle. Triumph is what this picture is. Victory for you is what this picture is. All by His body and blood his death and resurrection, were there we all together in a victorious outcry shout to the ends of the earth, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.
Amen.